So hello everyone and welcome to the Chestnut Financial Wellness uh, presentation installment three. Myself, Murphy Richard, I'm a recovery support specialist here at Chestnut Health Systems. Joining me is Brian Irwin from the Chestnut Credit Counseling Department where he's a coordinator. And this session will be on credit reports. We'll go through the information that Brian's prepared for us on credit reports and reporting. And then we'll have a brief session for Q&A at the end. But I think first we're going to do a quick mindfulness breathing exercise. You know, finances can be a stressful topic and and I know for me, even before I go to start taking any action on my finances, just, just thinking about my finances can put me in a place of anxiety. So if I'm trying to make decisions about my finances, I don't want to be doing it from a place of anxiety. I don't want to be doing it from a place of fear or I want to be able to make it sound decisions. So in an effort to do that, we're going to do the sober breathing exercise here. And this is an exercise that you can do almost anywhere, anytime. It's very brief and quite simple. It can be used in the midst of a high risk or stressful situation. If you're upset, if you're experiencing urges or cravings, uh, and it can help you step out of that automatic pilot that usually precipitates uh, relapse or other bad behavior. You'll be less reactive and more aware and mindful in your response. So those are things that I would like to have in my financial planning and just in my daily life. Uh, as it was said, you can do this in, in high risk or stressful situations, but it's also something you can just do in your everyday life to practice. I find that the more that I practice doing stuff like this, when I am just going about my regular day, the more apt I am to pick up these tools when I am in a high risk or stressful situation. The sober breathing exercise uh, is an acronym. And the first letter there, S, stands for stop. When you are in a stressful or risky situation, or even at just random times throughout the day, remember to stop and do this exercise. This is the first step in stepping out of automatic pilot. O is for observe. Observe the sensations that are happening in your body. Also observe any emotions, moods, or thoughts you are having. Just notice as much as you can about your experience. And B is for breathe. Allow your attention to settle on your breath. So now I just want everyone to close your eyes and take it one deep breath for us in through the nose. And hold there for just a moment and release out through the mouth. Slow, deep breaths and allow your attention to settle there. Then after we've done that, E, expand. Expand your awareness to include the rest of your body to your experience and to the situation. Seeing if you can gently hold it all in awareness. And R is for respond. And we say respond, of course, versus react. Mindfully, with awareness, what is truly needed in the situation and how you can best take care of yourself. And that's the sober breathing exercise. Thank you, Brian. All right. Thank you, Murphy. And we will proceed with the uh, uh, presentation. Chestnut Credit Counseling Services. We're a member of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling and also accredited by the Council on Accreditation. Being associated with these two entities basically make sure that we're looking out for our client's best interest. We're a nonprofit agency helping individuals overcome obstacles with debt repayment and money management. All appointments are free of charge and confidential. Phone number is 800-615-3022. And our website is chestnut.org slash credit. The concept of credit can be complicated. People sometimes confuse the words debt and credit because they both have to do with borrowing money. A simplified way to tell them apart is to think of credit as the ability to borrow money and repay it later. While debt is the money that you have to repay or already owe, what is a credit report? It's a warehouse of financial data on individuals with data released to those with the legitimate right to see. It's information gathered from credit card lenders, banks, collection agencies, and other creditors. It also has tax liens and bankruptcy court notifications. Annually, you are allowed one free credit report from each of the three credit bureaus. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian can all be ordered at the following website annualcreditreport.com. If you're not able to order it online, you can also call them at 877-322-8228 and it will be delivered via U.S. mail. So what's in my credit report? As demographic information, your name, also known as if you were previously married, different names, addresses, previous addresses, phone numbers, social security number is not listed on a credit report. I need to remove that employer and or previous employers. Trade lines. Those would be companies who you've borrowed from. It shows the creditor's name, partial account number, 
when they were open. When was this reported? What was your high credit amount? What was your credit limit? What were the payment terms? Uh, and your payment record and any comments that you would like to put on there. There's collection accounts, debts that have been turned over to a collection agency. Inquiries, that is a history. Most companies that have looked at your report in the last two years. Inquiries happen when you apply for a loan or say if a credit card company wants to send you a pre-approval or you applied for auto or homeowner's insurance. The inquiries will have contact information for the companies putting uh, those inquiries on the report. It'll say whether you're a co-signer on an account, an authorized user on an account, or a guarantor. It can also list tax liens. What is not in your report? Uh, records of arrests, convictions, background screenings for employment, marriage records, adoptions, civil suits and civil judgments, race or ethnicity. What is the credit report used for? It's used for making lending decisions, Get, getting approved for a car, house, credit cards, most types of loans, applying for utilities, cell phone service, applying for insurance, renting a new apartment, and getting a new job at times. It's usually asset related jobs, maybe working for a bank or something like that in a financial industry. Who can see your report only with your approval? Credit granters, uh, lenders you are doing businesses with or business with, employers, landlords, insurance companies, service providers such as cell phone companies and utility companies. You need to make sure you monitor your credit at least annually at that annualcreditreport.com. Hard inquiries. These are made by lenders after you apply for credit. That means you are trying to borrow money. These inquiries may affect your credit score. This is because most credit scoring models look at how recently and frequently you apply for credit. The more inquiries you have, especially in a 60 day range, the higher the credit risk you are. Creditors don't know which applications were approved and for how much money you are approved to borrow. Soft inquiries. These are reviews of your credit file when you have not sought to establish a new credit account. They include reviews of existing accounts by lenders, pre-screening inquiries by prospective lenders, and your request for your annual credit report. These won't affect your credit score. When applying for a car or homeowner's insurance or a landlord request, those also do not impact your credit score. What is credit history? Well, you want a positive credit history to boost your credit score. Make sure to pay attention to your credit reports. Credit scores are based on the information in the credit reports. Take the time once again every year to review reports for any errors. Negative history on a report. Late payments. Payment history is 35% of the total score. So it's pretty important to make your payments on time. Bankruptcies, back child support, collections, charged off accounts, or excessive inquiries can be negative. Do you know credit card accounts and the balance to limit ratios weigh heavier than paying your car or house note? What I'm saying is credit bureaus find or feel that a responsible use of revolving credit, which is a credit card, is way heavier than paying your car on time all the time. Try to pay your cards off completely each month to avoid compound interest. Don't spend money you don't have. Positive information can stay on your report forever. On-time payments can stay on your credit report forever. Late payments are on the report for seven years and bankruptcy can be on the report for up to 10 years. Definitions of terms, an authorized user, this is used mostly for, say, children to be able to use their parents' credit card, or lately it, it's been utilized to help boost your credit score because you can piggyback off somebody's payment history. The authorized user is a person permitted to use the credit card but is not responsible for making the payment on the account. But this is another reason to pull your credit if you're an authorized user, you can keep an eye on the cardholder's payment history. If they start racking the debts up and pay, making late payments, your credit score is going to be impacted in a negative way. So 
if something like that happens, you call up your friend or family member that you're authorized to use their card and ask them to remove you. See, uh, delinquency, an account that hasn't been paid on time and is late. Generally, delinquencies are expressed as being 30, 60, 90, or 120 days late. Uh, normally at 120 days, that account will charge off. The term default, that is where the consumer is not meeting the requirements agreed to when the loan was taken out. Charge off, an account is deemed uncollectible by the creditor for tax purposes only. That means the consumer is still responsible for the debt and may now be with, that debt may now be with a collection agency. Just because it's charged off doesn't mean that you don't owe it anymore. I get these calls quite a bit. They close the account, how do I pay? Well, you'll send the payment to the same address you've been sending it to prior to the account being closed. Just because your credit card company closed the account and charges it off, it doesn't mean you don't owe the debt. Credit bureau disputes. Consumers have the right to challenge and require an investigation of information they believe is incorrect on their credit reports. Consumers must start the dis dispute process. The process starts with the credit bureaus. Don't call the bank or the credit card company to get them to correct your report information. You'll waste your time. And again, make sure you get that credit report more than once a year, or at least once a year, uh, or, or you can get your credit report more than once a year, I, I apologize. If you are unemployed and plan to look for work in the next 60 days, if you're receiving public assistance, or you believe the report is wrong because of fraud, you are entitled to get an additional credit report for free during the year. Credit reports for minors, if you are under 18, the only way you will have a credit report is if you're an authorized user on account, a joint owner on account, an emancipated minor, or you live in a state that allows you to enter contracts, or if you have student loans. Here's how you would dispute an error you find on the credit report. File the dispute with the agency reporting the error. Say it's on the TransUnion, but not on Equifax. That can happen. They have 30 days to investigate your dispute. They must send you written notice of the result within five business days of the completed investigation. If there, error, if there are errors, then it must be deleted from your report and correct the information entered. This is done by the credit reporting agencies. When filing an error report, you need support documents and highlight mistakes on the credit report, copies of anything that proves an error copies of credit card statements and cleared checks or money order stubs that shows you paid on time. If, if need be, copies of your social security card, birth certificate, or other personal identity information may be required by the credit bureau, but make sure you don't send originals. Here's contact information for Equifax. Online, it's equifax.com. If, and if you're filing a dispute, you can put the slash personal slash disputes. P.O. Box 740256 Atlanta, Georgia. And you can always call them at 800-864-2978. TransUnion Online is transunion.com. And then if you have a dispute, there is the complete address. Their mailing address is P.O. Box 2000, Chester, Pennsylvania. And their phone is 800-916-8800. And last but not least, we have Experian online at experian.com slash disputes. And their address is PO Box 4500, Allen, Texas. And their phone number is 888-397-3742. All right, what is a credit score? A credit score is a number assigned by credit reporting companies based on information available on your credit report. It's like a test score. The higher the score, the better the credit. Credit scores vary because different companies may look at different information and use different formulas to calculate your score. You can have three different credit scores from all three different credit bureaus. It just depends on the model that they are requesting. There are many different models of credit scoring. Let's say you apply for a, a credit card and then a score for a car loan and a house loan. A house loan actually takes the average of the three credit bureaus. They call that a FICO score. Credit utilization. Experts advise keeping your credit use to no more than 30% of your total credit limit on revolving credit accounts. 
that would be a credit card. Um, say you have a credit limit of 10,000. They say you should have a balance of 3,000, which would be 30% or preferably less. Personally, I ran into a situation where I bumped my um, credit utilization ratio from about 2% to 24% in one fell swoop, and I lost 30 points on my credit score. I did not think it would impact it by that much. So in other words, keep the credit card balances as low as possible. Zero is best. Keep a low credit util utilization rate because credit scoring formulas penalize you for using too much credit and higher usage may cause a lower credit score. And there's the FICO score. These, these scores usually range from 300 to 850. A FICO score above 700 is considered good by most businesses. And scores of 750 and higher are considered the best. Below 650 is considered a high risk. Here's kind of a graph, 300 to 629, get up to about 630, you're doing a little better, get to 689. And you're gonna get decent interest rates once you start getting up into these ranges. The higher your score, the lower the interest rate you can apply for and ask for. Keeping a healthy credit report and score, pay bills on time, late payments are bad and they take a long time to fall off. Again, the, the uh, payment history is 35% of the total score. Keep balances low, pay more than the minimum payment. Don't exceed your credit limit on a credit card. That'll tank your score really quick along with a late payment. Keep track of your spending. Watch for any problems on your monthly statements. Have an emergency fund just in case something happens. You don't wanna to have to fall back on a credit card. You wanna be able to not borrow money. So here's the percentages of how payment history amounts owed, new credit. So 35% is making sure that you make your payments on time. 30% of the score is how much do you owe. Length of history is about 15% of the score. New credit's 10% and then types of credit usage is another 10%. Keeping a healthy credit report and score. S stay in touch with your creditors if you're having money problems and you're gonna be running late. Don't close old credit cards. This will reduce your average age and available credit. Limit your applications for new credit, manage your overall debt, and watch your credit report for errors. Mix it up. The credit mix is having different types of credit. For instance, credit cards, uh, a mortgage, auto loans, and others. The more variety you have, the better it looks on your report. It gives you more history to look at. Remember, though, that credit uses is only 10% of the overall score. So there's no need to put a lot of stock in diversification. Don't go out and take a car loan just to diversify your credit report. What to do? Pick a method to order your credit reports. Be ready to answer some security questions when you're doing it online. Uh, typically online, it's gonna be timed. If you don't answer the questions quick enough, it's gonna say, nope, we're not gonna give it to you. And you're gonna, you'll have to order it by mail or by phone. Decide when to order them. Right? If you are able to pull all three reports once a year, I feel it's a good idea to order one credit report, say every four months. Create a reminder on your phone or calendar when to order the following year. Make sure you order your credit reports. Our recommendation, let's see, is onlinecreditreport.com. That is the government mandated website for all United States consumers to get their credit reports for free. Uh, you can send the request by mail to PO Box 105281, Atlanta, Georgia. Or you can call 877-322-8228. Always remember a credit report and score are almost just as important in your life as your parent, children, and pets. I know that's extreme, but you wanna keep them in good health and take care of them. Think of your credit report and score the same way. A good clean report should make for a good score. One thing before I let you go, Chestnut Credit Counseling Service is always here to help with your budgeting needs and most things financial. Our website is chestnut.org slash credit. Our services, how to get out of credit card debt, 
we can actually request credit card companies for you to reduce the interest rates depending on your situation. If you're a victim of identity theft, I will help you retake your identity. And then I can also help uh, discuss how to prevent it. Would you like to review your credit reports? Do they look like Arabic symbols to you? Give me a call, I'll be glad to help. Uh, we also provide the Department of Justice required bookend of bankruptcy classes you have to take when filing for bankruptcy and being discharged and debt management plans and more. And that would be the end of the presentation. I appreciate your patience and I hope there was something that uh, you learned today. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask.